until now, when we had our ordinary supply and demand curves, what we were assuming without really stating it usually is that all the costs and benefits that we're concerned with with this particular market are reflected on this graph. Um, and so as we saw, our supply curve um, is essentially a marginal cost curve. And so this is the extra cost of producing one additional unit. And so this is telling us all the costs of producing any particular amount. Um, and our demand curve is the marginal benefit curve. Because um, remember, it's the willingness to pay for any, any additional unit of this good, or in other words, how much benefit people are getting um, in terms of their willingness to pay for one additional unit of this good. And so by going to equilibrium, we are assuming that we're producing all the units where that marginal benefit is above marginal cost and so we're maximizing total surplus. In other words, it's efficient. Um, consumer surplus, producer surplus, there's no way to improve on this outcome in terms of total surplus. So as we saw when we did price controls, any price other than P1 in this case is going to reduce the amount of total surplus. So we were at an efficient point by getting to that equilibrium. Again, assuming that there aren't any costs and benefits that are not being reflected on this graph. Um, now we're going to change that assumption. Um, and now we're going to make this distinction between private cost and social cost. And so, so all we mean by social in this context, social cost or social benefit, is just all the costs and benefits that we might possibly be concerned about. So from society's point of view, anyone who might possibly be affected by this market. Um, and again, in our ordinary case that we've been doing up until now, there was no difference between private cost and social cost because um, social includes everyone. Well, there wasn't anyone other than the people being affected. In this case, the producers were bearing this cost, so it was the marginal private cost. And that was the same as the marginal social cost because social includes all the costs, but there were only private costs to worry about. Um, this was just the cost being incurred by the producers of this good, and that was the only cost. Um, and the same thing on the demand side. So the private benefit is just uh, the buyer of this good. They're getting a private benefit by consuming this good. And that was also the social benefit um, because those are the only benefits we were concerned with. When we have an externality, there's now going to be a difference between private and social. So the classic case of a negative externality would be pollution. Um, so let's say we're producing this good in, in some factory, whatever it is, and every time we produce one unit, we're also emitting some amount of pollution. And so some third party is bearing the cost of that um, pollution. Um, someone other than either the buyer or seller or the per people who are transacting in this market, so they're a third party. Um, and so now, whenever we produce this good, we are imposing some external cost. Someone else is bearing the cost of pollution, not the producer. So some third party is bearing the cost. So every time we produce a unit, this distance um, in dollar, dollar amount um, is, is the cost of one extra unit uh, of output in terms of pollution. So we're polluting this much um, pollution that is imposing that much cost every time we produce a unit. Um, so for any particular unit, you know, the, the private cost is here. So all the, all the costs that producers are worried about, um, you know, in particular, the variable cost is going to be labor. So, you know, I have to hire one more worker or one more unit of, of worker, um, worker hour or something uh, to produce one more unit of output. But then we have this additional social cost for that particular unit. Someone's bearing the cost of that pollution. So keep in mind, this is not a supply shift. Um, I'm now just showing where the marginal social cost is and where the marginal private cost. Now, the, so the supply curve is always marginal private cost. It was just that before, it also happened to be marginal social cost because there was no distinction that was the only, those were the only costs we were worried about. Um, so I haven't shifted the supply curve here. The supply is still the private cost being borne by the producer of this product. 
um, but now I'm just showing where the marginal social cost is. Um, and again, the external cost is just that difference, but the, the marginal social cost includes everything. Um, so at some particular quantity, all the costs um, in marginal terms are being reflected here, which includes, in this case, mostly private costs, but then we have that additional external cost. And so our market outcome, what we're calling the, uh, you know, the, the unregulated outcome or without any kind of intervention in this market, um, our producers are going to only have the incentive to care about their own private cost. And so the market is using this to decide where to produce and our buyers, um, they're not bearing the cost or, or we assume, um, you know, the buyer is one of a million people who are bearing this cost of pollution and their decision of whether to purchase this product has no, no effect on that. And so their willingness to pay has nothing to do with that external cost. And so the market outcome is just going to be here, right? Essentially, there's an incentive to just ignore this external cost. There's no incentive to, to account for that external cost. So that's going to be an inefficient level of production. Um, it's efficient. It's always efficient to account for all the social costs and social benefits, which again is what we were doing originally, going back to our curve our graph with no externalities. The reason why we were able to say it was efficient was really because marginal social cost equals marginal social benefit at that point. Or in other words, we're producing all the units for which marginal social benefit is greater than marginal social cost. It's just that in that case, it's also the same as private costs and private benefits. So it's always looking at social, which determines the, the efficient allocation of resources. So in this case, it's, it's efficient to keep producing this good or consuming this good as long as the marginal social benefit, and in this case there's no difference between private and social on the demand side, marginal social benefit is greater than marginal social cost, so the efficient point is here. Um, so decide if, if we're making an efficient decision, we're looking at what are all the costs, what are all the benefits, in other words social costs versus social benefits. So as long as those, those marginal social benefit is greater than marginal social cost, we keep producing, um, and so that's the efficient quantity. Now the market outcome goes past that point, which is why we're going to get an inefficiently high quantity of production because producers are not taking into account all of their costs. Um, and so when we go to label deadweight loss, um, you just have to be careful about what is going on as we move past that efficient point in this case, or anytime we're away from the efficient point, we're creating deadweight loss. So just, so just always remember we're looking at social and social. Any difference between those two is what's creating deadweight loss. So um, the deadweight loss triangle in this case looks like this. Um, because as I go past the efficient point, the reason why it's, it's inefficient is because for these extra units, the marginal social cost is here and the marginal social benefit is here, so that is a wasteful allocation of resources once we account for all of the costs and benefits. Um, so just be aware of what's going on with your deadweight loss triangle because because there's a, a common mistake is you just draw a graph like this and then you see this little triangle here and you want to color that in. Um, and it might be the same area because we the way we drew these curves, but we want to get conceptually the right area, which is always any difference between social cost and social benefit um, that we're producing is what's creating that deadweight loss. So for all of these units, um, there is a, a, a wasted resource because we're producing too much of this good. It's not worth it if we look at all the costs and benefits to produce the extra units of this good. So we're producing too much in the case of a negative externality.